A lot of times we listen to songs depending on the mood we're in, whether it's happy, sad, or if you're feeling like you're on top of the world. But how often are we listening to songs that leave us with an unsettling feeling? Well, for this video, I've gathered seven of the darkest songs ever written, starting off with Dance with the Devil by Immortal Technique. So on my last video like this, I got a million comments saying, Why didn't you talk about Dance with the Devil by Immortal Technique? How can you talk about dark rap songs and not talk about this song? People were actually like really upset that I didn't talk about it, but the reason was is because so many people have covered it before, but I I figured, you know, may as well talk about it in this one because it does have an interesting story. So Dance with the Devil by Immortal Technique isn't necessarily a very dark song when it comes to how it sounds, but the story that the lyrics tell makes it very disturbing. I'm going to briefly summarize the lyrics for you as the song is 7 minutes. It's about a kid named William whose goal in life was to make money. His mom was an addict and he didn't have a dad, so his mom quit doing drugs just to provide for him. However, he was so focused on making money and looking hard that he joined a gang and started selling drugs. One time he got caught and told on his gang making them lose all the respect they had for him so he wanted to work extra hard to earn back their respect so him and his crew went out one night and found a lady walking home from work then they put a shirt around her head and kidnapped her they told william it was his chance to be raw so he beat her breaking her jaw and ribs then they all you know you know what they did Afterwards, William was about to kill her, but first he took the shirt off of her head and found out that it was his own mom. Sickened by what him and his crew just did to her, William jumped off the building they were standing on top of. Towards the end of the song, Immortal Technique says, And listen, cause the story I'm telling is true, cause I was there with Billy Jacobs and I ripped his mom too. This line has prompted a ton of people to think that this is a true story, but he says he wasn't actually there and that the song is just based on things that happen all around the world. It's not necessarily based on one specific instance. He said in one interview that it was really about how we are killing ourselves and destroying the most valuable resource that the Latino slash black community has, our women. But I think he best explained it in this clip of him in a live show. Oh, is that a true story? Did that shit really happen? And I tell motherfuckers, yo, it happens in every day, in every country, all over the world, motherfucker. He went on a whole two minute speech about how important women are and how horribly they can be treated. He said in another interview that the reason he made this song so graphic is because it made it impossible for people to ignore his message. It really is a very powerful song with a very powerful message. But there's another song that's somehow even darker both lyrically and sonically, and that song is called Jonestown Tea by Otep. Otep is a metal band from LA that was formed in 2000, with their lead vocalist being Otep Shamaya. Jonestown Tea starts off with an eerie guitar riff and then, on the nearly 10 minute song, Otep describes an awful situation that involves her being raped by her own dad when she was a kid. Honestly, I don't really want to read off any of the lyrics for this video, but I would advise that you guys check it out if you want to hear some pretty disturbing stuff. But she tells the story with broken down vocals, and the way she conveys all of her thoughts and feelings about the situation is very clear. There's whispering, yelling, crying, and screaming all throughout the song. Then at the end of the song, she says she stabbed her dad and cut out his tongue, although that part didn't likely happen. It was probably just something that she understandably wanted to do. Honestly, it's one of the eeriest songs I think I've ever heard. When asked about the song, Otep said, I wanted to do something dramatic for the record. At one of our rehearsals, management was there and some people from a label were scouting us and we just started to improvise. By the end of the song, which was about 13 or 14 minutes later, people's jaws were on the floor. I'd kind of gone off into this place and didn't realize what had occurred. Something remarkable had taken place. Once we'd gone through that and everyone was like, where did that come from? I decided that this was something important that I wanted to express and communicate on the record. So like she said, this song was actually improvised, which makes it a lot more powerful. While Jonestown T effectively communicates the feelings of the artist, Solace by Earl Sweatshirt also does an amazing job at conveying his emotions. This is a fan favorite song when it comes to Earl Sweatshirt's catalog because of how dark and personal he gets. The 10 minute song was made when Earl Sweatshirt had hit rock bottom with his mental health and drug use. He says in the description of the song, music from when I hit the bottom and found something. His writing like usual is very cryptic and may be hard to catch at first, but when you really listen to the lyrics, it's obvious that he wasn't doing well. For example, one of his lyrics was, I spent days faded and anemic. You can see it in my face. I ain't been eating. I'm just wasting away. He said that over the course of two years, he went from 155 pounds to 118, which definitely isn't a healthy weight for five foot nine grown men. What is a healthy weight for a man? Maybe I'm spitting lies. Yeah, the healthy weight for a five foot nine guy is 144 pounds to 176. So yeah, it's not good. That is not good at all. He expanded on a lot of topics he covered in his previous album, I Don't Like Shit, I Don't Go Outside, an album that heavily dealt with his mental health issues. Other lines further expressing this sentiment could be, I got my grandmama's hands, I start to cry when I see him because they remind me of seeing her. These are the times that I needed her the most because I feel defeated. He continues to talk about how he's at a loss of friends. And then Earl concludes the song by saying, Well, time waits for no man and death waits with cold hands. I'm the youngest old man that you know. If your soul intact, let me know. It isn't necessarily just 
just the lyrics that transmit this feeling either, but it's everything from the vocal delivery to the way that he produced the track. I've seen a ton of fans say in the comments that this song sounds like what depression feels like. The sample in the intro is especially eerie. And so is the dissonant piano melody on the second beat. Solace means comfort or consolation in a time of distress or sadness, and maybe this song was exactly that. However, this next song actually contradicts the title, as it wasn't actually written, and the only lyrics are the word death. 515 by Slipknot is a song named after the area code of Des Moines, Iowa, where most of the Slipknot members are from. It's a minute-long song that contains screaming, crying, and shouting of the word death. But the vocals weren't actually performed by the lead vocalist, Corey Taylor. They were actually performed by Sid Wilson. The story behind this song is what makes it so haunting. Sid's grand father was very sick, and Slipknot was in the process of finishing up their album, Iowa. He said he was going to quickly get his parts done for the album in a couple of days, and then fly out to see his grandpa. But before he could finish, his grandfather passed away. So he went back to the studio, told the engineer to start recording, and he just let out all of his raw feelings with no intention of it becoming a song for the album. Sid said, yeah, that screaming and crying and breaking down that you hear at the end of the album, that's me. Obviously it was edited, things were done to it, reversed, pushed around in areas to make it what it was. But if we actually played the raw recording of it, I don't think many people would be able to stomach it. It was pretty brutal, but that's all I've ever known how to do, express myself through music and art. Similar to 515, there's a song that's not so dark lyrically, but it's really the story behind it that makes it sad, and that song is Dead Girl by Zillikami. In the last video I made like this, I talked about his song Space Cowboy, but I got a lot of comments saying I should talk about this one too, so... Here it is. Dead Girl was a song written by Zillikami where he talked about his ex-girlfriend's drug addiction. Throughout this song, he's pretty cryptic, but the first verse gives a good idea of the situation. He says, She got hooked on ketamine, future broken, heavy weight. It took a long time to know, couldn't break. She took a long time to go over pain, student scholar, couldn't pay got indebted, heavy weight. It took a long time to know, bank can't wait. It took a short time to grow over pain. So essentially what he's saying in this verse, although again, it's kind of cryptic, this girl was struggling with drug addiction and also had a bunch of other life issues that were probably being made even harder because of the drug addiction, like student debt and other things like that. And then he ends the song by saying, you're dead in the ground. Meaning that if his ex-girlfriend continues this lifestyle, she'll end up dead. Zilla Kami said this song along with Space Cowboy were the hardest songs to record for his project. He had finished the song while she was still alive, but Unfortunately, before the song was released, she passed away, as he says in an interview with Brandon Buckingham. It's so weird because I um I made her die at the end of the song and she wasn't dead yet. I was saying like that lifestyle is gonna kill you, and then she died, and I was like, what the fuck? That's why that song was so like crazy. Another song that has just as dark of a story behind it is Life Eternal by Mayhem. Mayhem is a Norwegian black metal band that has one of the craziest and most controversial stories I've ever heard. I'll try to sum it up in this video, but honestly, there's a whole documentary that I put in the description because it is fascinating and I highly recommend you guys check it out. Maybe one day if you want me to, I can talk about it in a video. After being founded in 1984 and losing their lead vocalist in 1988, a 17-year-old kid by the name of Pele, better known by his stage name, dead wanted to join the band when he wanted to join mayhem he sent the band a letter his demo and a dead rat because of his talent as a vocalist he became their lead singer they said he was an odd kid obsessed with the idea of death and even slept with dead birds under his bed because he liked the smell of death so much one bandmate even claimed that dead stabbed the lead guitarist and founder of the band named euronymous in 1991 some of the bandmates were living together and while the others were out dead took his own life euronymous was the first to find his body along with a note that said Excuse the blood, but I have slit my wrist and neck. To give some semblance of an explanation, I'm not a human. This is just a dream, and soon I will awake. I left all my lyrics by Let the Good Times Roll, plus the rest of the money. Whoever finds it gets the fucking thing. As a last salutation, may I present Life Eternal. Do whatever you want with the thing. I didn't come up with this now, but 17 years ago. Like I said, he was very young, so it's weird to hear him say that he came up with this idea of ending his life when he was like three years old or something like that. Along with the note were lyrics that read, A dream of another existence, you wish to die. A dream of another world, you pray for death. To release the soul, one must die. To find peace inside, you must get eternal. I am immortal, but am I human? How beautiful life is now, when my time is come. A human destiny, but nothing human inside. What will be left of me when I'm dead? There was nothing when I lived. What you found was eternal death. No one will ever miss you. The bandmates considered giving the song to someone else, but they decided to keep it on their own album. Obviously, he was no longer around to sing the lyrics, so someone else performed them for him. And just to give you guys more of an idea of how weird this band was, you're 
Anonymous, the founder of the band who discovered the body in Note, went to the store to get a disposable camera to take pictures of the body. Then a fellow bandmate recalls that Euronymous called him the next day and said, Dead has done something really cool. He killed himself. Euronymous then proceeded to try to capitalize on Dead's death, and he even sent the pictures to his friend who made an album cover out of them. He also apparently even made a necklace out of pieces of his skull. A few years later, a newer member of Mayhem who played bass ended up murdering Euronymous. So this band has an extremely dark history. And like I said, after this video, I recommend you guys checking out the documentary in the description. The next song will have a hard time following up that one, but Man Wearing a Helmet by Bedwetter tells quite the unsettling story. Bedwetter is an alias created by Lil Ugly Man that he uses to cover more deep and personal topics. The song tells the story of a boy who was kidnapped by an unknown man, stuffed into the trunk of a car while he was playing at his neighbor's house, and then taken to the man's basement. The song has a very eerie feeling with the way it's produced, and the sounds of rain in the background really paint a picture in your head. It also opens up with samples of people talking, and it sounds like they could be news interviews with people talking about a kidnapping, although I could be wrong. And then when the beat drops in the song, the melody is so dissonant and eerie that it really makes you feel something. Fans love how well this song communicates that feeling, and they speculate about the meaning of the song. Some people think that it's a true story, either about himself or someone else, and others think that it has a completely different meaning. With how descriptive he is and how great the storytelling is, you really would think that it's a real situation. When he released the project, he mentioned that he had been struggling with his mental health, and while he didn't want to go into detail, he said he checked into the hospital, so hopefully Lil Ugly Man is doing better. Since music is such a fantastic way to convey emotions, obviously there's a ton of other dark and disturbing songs out there. Obviously, I couldn't cover every single one in this video, so I just picked seven that were interesting to me, but make sure to leave your favorites in the comments below. Other than that, this has been Matty Balls. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.